This video accompanies our paper submission, Online Trajectory Optimization for Dynamic Aerial Motions of a Quadruped Robot. For this paper, we were motivated by the challenge of a small-scale quadruped robot conquering obstacles not traversable via standard locomotion. Such obstacles include platforms as tall as the robot's nominal standing height, platforms or hurdles encountered while running, and 3D obstacles that the robot must jump laterally to conquer. A framework is intended to be general to any 3D obstacle that the robot might encounter. As such, the inputs to our jump planner include only the desired landing state of the robot and the contact schedule the robot is to follow as it jumps. For this work, this information was provided by the user, but ongoing work involves letting a higher level planner autonomously provide such inputs when it detects a jumpable obstacle. The motion planner for dynamic aerial movements consists of three steps. The first step, an entirely kinematic step, sketches a trajectory for the center of mass and orientation of the robot based on its current position and the desired landing position. This reference trajectory is fed to the online trajectory optimization, which optimizes the set of ground reaction forces that best achieve that reference trajectory. This nonlinear optimization is executed once per detected obstacle, as opposed to an MPC type approach. Rather than MPC, we track the optimized trajectory using what we refer to as a variational based optimal controller. This controller, which is analogous to a linear quadratic regulator, computes variations to the nominal optimal control policy that stabilize the robot through its jumping motion at a rate of 500 Hz. The result is a controller that enables small-scale quadruped robots like the Mini Cheetah to perform aerial movements over obstacles such as hurdles. The kinematic reference trajectory generation can be described as follows. Consider first a planar landscape with a tall but jumpable obstacle. Consider the robot as a single rigid body floating in space. The robot has an initial position, an initial orientation, and an initial velocity. In order to perform the jump, the robot must go through some takeoff phase. It gets it to the state at the moment of liftoff, the moment when all the legs lose contact with the ground. It then experiences a flight phase, throughout which its momentum is not controllable, until it finally lands at its terminal state. If we consider, for now, only the vertical or z-direction motion of the robot, we can describe the evolution of its position throughout the flight phase according to a ballistic trajectory. This ballistic trajectory depends on the state of the robot at liftoff. But if we know the vertical acceleration of the robot throughout takeoff, then this liftoff state is easily obtainable. So, in order to generate reference trajectories, what we do is select a set of time-varying nominal vertical reaction forces and then sum them to get the reference vertical acceleration. If we propagate this vertical acceleration upward through these equations, we are left with an equation with only one unknown, corresponding to the duration of the flight period. This term appears quadratically, but we can easily solve for it. We use a simple policy for selecting the reference vertical acceleration. We first generate a linear function with respect to time, described by its slope gamma and intercept beta which are tuning parameters between 0 and 1. At every time step, we multiply this function by the sum of the maximum allowable force for each foot scheduled to be in contact. The known binary parameter phi here denotes at a given time step whether a foot is in or out of contact. While the maximum force a given leg is capable of generating is a configuration-dependent quantity, we do not consider the configurations of the leg at this point in the jump planner. We therefore use a constant value for f max that corresponds to the configuration of the robot in its standard balancing position. If known, the configuration of the robot can be accounted for, though, via tuning of the beta and gamma terms. If the robot starts from a position that is compromised in terms of force, force generation, such as squatting low to the ground, beta can be set low to, say, 0.5, while gamma can be set to 1, since it assumed that at this time, the robot's legs will be sufficiently extended. Essentially, the policy is just a way to scale the desired flight time of a jump given the two parameters beta and gamma. Once the reference flight time is known, if we assume that the reference acceleration of the robot in the x and y directions is constant, then it is straightforward to use the same ballistic equations from before to solve for the accelerations required to have the robot land in the desired x and y locations. The acceleration appears linearly in these equations and is thus simple to solve for. Note that if a desired rotation about an axis of the robot is desired, such as a barrel roll or backflip, then this same process can be applied, replacing position and velocity with angular displacement and angular velocity. 
The next step of our motion planner is the trajectory optimization. For our optimization, we use a dynamic model that treats the robot as a single rigid body. The state of the robot is described by the position of the robot's center of mass, the orientation of the robot with respect to an inertial frame. We use Euler angles to describe this orientation. The linear velocity of the center of mass and the angular velocity of the robot's body. The ground reaction forces at each of the robot's feet create a net wrench on the robot's center of mass that is used to control its momentum. The control input to our trajectory optimization, therefore, is the set of ground reaction forces at each foot, as well as the positions of the feet. We formulate the trajectory optimization using direct transcription and we thus discretize the state and control trajectories into n time steps. We use a quadratic cost function that simply penalizes the deviation between the reference state and control trajectories versus the optimized trajectories, denoted here by x tilde. We enforce the same set of constraints for every optimization, regardless of the obstacle type. We enforce the discrete, single rigid body dynamics starting from our known initial state. We also enforce that all feet scheduled to be in contact with the ground denoted again by the parameter phi, must be placed on the ground. Here, z sub g is a function that maps the xy location of the foot to the height of the ground at that location. Despite not including the joint positions of the robot in the optimization, we enforce kinematic feasibility by limiting the distance between each foot and the hip to which it is attached. And lastly, we enforce that all ground reaction forces must lie within their respective friction cones. These optimizations which take between 200 to 100 milliseconds on a laptop computer with an Intel i7 processor, are carried out only once in preparation for a jump. After an optimal trajectory is found, this trajectory is tracked using a variational-based optimal controller, which runs at 500 Hz. Variational-based optimal control can be succinctly described as the synthesis of two main concepts. The first is linearization on the manifold of rotation matrices, referred to as SO3 and the second is a control input constrained analog of LQR. In the case of linearizing our single rigid body dynamics, we actually augment the state of our robot in two ways. First, we describe its orientation using rotation matrices rather than Euler angles. Second, we include the positions of the feet in the state rather than keep them as control inputs. Using variational based linearization, which enables linearization on the SO3 manifold, the dynamics of the single rigid body model become linear in the tracking error s and the variation to the control input, delta u. The coefficient matrices a and b for this linear system depend only on the time varying trajectory about which we linearize. In our case, we linearize about the optimal trajectory found in the previous step, denoted here by x bar and u bar. We use these linear dynamics to pose our optimal tracking control problem, which you will notice looks similar to LQR form, but for the addition of constraints on the control input. The result is a local feedback policy that provides stabilizing modifications to the nominal control policy, U-bar. To understand variational-based optimal control, consider first the unconstrained LQR problem. Recall that this problem has a quadratic cost to go, V, that the LQR controller aims to minimize. This cost to go depends on the symmetric positive definite matrix P, which can be computed over the entire trajectory via integration backward in time of the Riccati differential equation. In the case of our variational based optimal controller, we aim to perform a Bellman equation like minimization to find the optimal control policy. In other words, we want to minimize some running cost over the current time step while simultaneously minimizing the cost to go at the next time step. However, rather than use the challenging to compute constrained cost to go, which likely does not have a clean analytical form, we use the simple unconstrained cost to go shown in the previous slide. Plugging this unconstrained cost to go into the right-hand side of the cost function and taking the derivative with respect to time, we can replace s dot with our variational based linear dynamics. And finally, by removing the terms that do not depend on delta u, we are left with an optimization that is quadratic in the Bellman-like cost and subject to linear friction constraints on the control input delta u. This makes the problem a QP. Furthermore, the QP depends only on the tracking error, reference trajectory, 
and Riccati matrix at the current time step. We do not have to explicitly consider future time steps in the QP tracking controller because the effect of current control inputs on future states is encoded via the Riccati matrix. As a result, the QP is very compact and able to be solved at a rate of 500 Hz. We demonstrate the viability of our jumping controller via demonstration on the MIT Mini Cheetah quadruped. As was mentioned before, the information on the desired landing location of the robot and the contact schedule of the robot are currently specified by the user, but ongoing work delegates this task to an autonomous higher level planner. The simple reference trajectory calculations are done on the Mini Cheetah's onboard low power computer. However, since the upboard is not suitable for solving nonlinear optimizations in real time, the optimization parameters are sent to a desktop, desktop computer via LCM. The optimization is solved once on the desktop and the outputs are sent back to the upboard, where the variational based optimal controller solves the associated QP in real time at 500 Hz. Future work with the modified MIT Mini Cheetah Vision will perform the nonlinear optimization on board using a Jetson TX2 computer, making the entire process fully on board.